looking to start an argument? Well, just walk into any place where more than two people are gathered in the upper Midwest and say just one word, lutefisk. Either you love it or you hate it. Well, producer Scott Moan of KWCM-TV in Appleton, Minnesota, found a place where the folks go crazy over their favorite Scandinavian fish delicacy. It had to happen sometime, a lutefisk eating contest. We'll tell you now, the following piece isn't for the faint of heart. In Madison, Minnesota, a farming community on the western edge of the state, you'll find a lot of Scandinavians. Not everyone there is Norwegian or Swedish, mind you, but plenty of folks are, and proud of it. If you drove through Madison without stopping to investigate, you might think it was just like any other small town. But one thing sets Madison apart from the past. For Madison is the lutefisk capital of the USA. The local VFW is home to this year's Norsefest Lutefisk Supper. Lutefisk is simply cod, and it is a, a, a great fish, and it's, it's caught and then it's dried in the wind. Lay, they set it out, and they dry it in the sun. And once it's dried, it comes over to this country, and it looks like a bale of hay. Did you know that? It looks like a bale of hay, and then we soak it out. So like three ounces becomes an 18-pound filet. It's just amazing. What happened during the 50s is that Madison ended up winning all the Ludafus contests as far as selling is concerned. The uh, different companies ran contests for Ludafus sales, and Madison won like 10 years in a row. So they stopped having the contest. So consequently, what happened after that is that the Chamber of Commerce decided we need something to draw people together to rally around. And so what happened is that they decided, hey, the, the point of the year when people get most excited is around Ludafus time. And so they said, we really are the, you know, the Ludafus capital of the world. There's other people in the world that produce Ludafus, you realize that. But there's no one that uh, actually lays, lays claim to having per capita consumption. That's what it's based on, per capita consumption. How would you describe the people of Madison, Minnesota on the whole? Oh, they're just all good, uh, good Scandinavians for the most part, and they know a good thing when they see it, you know, and, uh, and we realized that we had a good thing going in town here, and, and the consumption of lutefisk was at record levels right here in Madison, and people just flock in to buy it, and they love it. That's why I see I've, the whole time I'm talking, I've been eating, because I just can't even put it down. Now, we kind of like to uh, have people come to our community to find out what it's all about, take a look at our uh, big cod out in the highway there, you know. The Big Cod Indeed, aided by the Norwegian Embassy and a Wisconsin designer, the town folk constructed Lou T. Fisk, and he's now traveled to parades all over the country. The lucky visitor may even get to see Lou's walking counterpart in the flesh, although he's not always recognizable at first to the untrained eye. Earlier today, somebody mistook him for a potato. <laughs> and then a dog, but they finally realized that it was, uh, in fact, a walking in fact, cod. A walking cod, a seven-foot cod. The Norsefest Art Fair, a celebration of heritage attended by true believers and visitors alike, is the best place to pick up your ever-popular Mr. Lou T. Fisk paraphernalia. And as you may well expect, includes a lefse-making booth, a favorite of both man and fish. Sporting events are also quite popular. Well, what we're doing here, is, instead of uh, trying to get all the pins down, we're trying to not get any pins down. In order to make this a little tougher, we put some uh, bumpers, we call them, in the, uh, in the gutters. We use these bumpers for our junior bowlers, uh, so we put the bumpers in there so you can't get a gutter ball. And uh, we're just trying to get you not to knock pins down. Is this the type of style Madison people always use? Well, there's some of them that bowl like this all the time, but uh, we, we try, we've been trying to get them away from this. Uh, this may be a throwback. We'll probably never get them turned around again now, but uh, they'll probably want to bowl like this every time. Norwegian bowling aside, the highlight of this year's event was the first annual lutefisk eating contest. A test of courage, perhaps scoffed at by all but the true connoisseurs of cod. Why would anyone enter a lutefisk eating contest? It's healthy for you. Because I like it. It's been a family tradition. You're Norwegian. Oh, yeah. I am Matt Lutefisk. You're Miss Lutefisk? <laughs> Undefeated since 1974. <laughs> Are you Norwegian? Air Norsk. <laughs> Snucker the Norsk? Snucker leave the ground for starting and things. Yeah. <laughs> what did you do to practice for the Lutefisk? I didn't practice. I don't have to practice. 
<laughs> you think you're going to win today? I ate seven pounds for supper one night. Good God. Seven pounds? Yeah. For fun? That was my supper. <laughs> With half a kettle of potatoes and flat bread and milk, so. What do you put on your ludicrous? Butter. Melted butter. Butter? Butter. Not milk. No. A little bit butter and, and white sauce, you know. Mmm, it just slides down so nice. Just butter. But tonight I'm going to eat it plain. <laughs> you can eat more then. <laughs> Okay, the rule for this is one hour time limit, starting when I give the go. One hour meeting. Oh, I hope they're hungry. No leaving the table for any reason. Okay, you're in trouble. If you got to go, go now. Any excessive spillage will disqualify the con content. The plate must be clean before you receive more fish. No interfering or stealing from anybody else's plate. Okay? We have been challenged by Seattle, Washington to bring our champion to meet their champion. So during Sutton to Mai next year, the champion from tonight's contest will go out to Seattle, Washington to meet their contest. This is kind of a David versus Goliath thing then. Yeah, very definitely. What do you wash it down with? Well, you really don't need to wash it down. It just goes down by itself. <laughs> it's going down your chin. That's when you can really tell that you're getting into it. Rasty, don't spill any of that. It's valuable. <laughs> Uh, just in case any of you have contestants seen anything, we have the official bags here, which will be behind you. Okay, maybe some of you front row will want to shoot a foot over their heads, just in case you get some extra. And then it's the half to the contestants. Don't Charlie up there. Okay, I'm going to notice here. Has anybody done some more? Gordon, we're 50 minutes into the contest. How are you feeling? Just getting my second win, boy. <laughs> we got another How many pounds have you eaten so far? I don't know. That's, that's the judge roll there. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we're gonna find Must out. be about 10 pounds now. No. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like it is. <laughs> How much have you eaten so far? Four, seven pounds. So what's the record? Eight. Eight. One pound to go, <laughs> including this plate? Yep. So if you finish this plate, you're getting pretty darn close. Yep. Eight pounds. <laughs> what? Ten. Nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold it. Next time. Okay, we'll weigh what's left on the plate. Let's give you the official total. Okay, first place was Jerry Ostrich with 6.77 hundredths of a pound. Congratulations, Jerry. Second place was Gordy Harwick with 5.48 hundredths of a pound. One of the things that happens when you try to describe a town is a, a, a town is sort of a melting pot. And Madison, Minnesota is not much different than any other town. And I know when we went out east with the fish, we assumed that we were going to find much more intellectual, much more uh, articulate individuals. And we found out that people are the same all over the world. Still, you can't help but wonder as to whether these hardy Minnesotans, lovers of lutefisk and keepers of the faith, may be just a bit goofy. Oh, I don't know, just true lover. Not, I don't know, I can't go along with a goofy, can you? No way, I don't, I don't see anything goofy about this at all, sir. <laughs> if you have a story idea or a comment for us, we'd love to hear from you. Just write to Venture North in care of WDSE-TV. 1202 East University Circle, Duluth, Minnesota, 55811, or contact your local Minnesota Public Television Association station. Most of